So for 2014 AP Calculus AB for response question number four, we're given a table and some information about it and some values in the table. So let's go ahead and read this problem. Train A runs back and forth on an east-west section of railroad track. Train A's velocity, measured in meters per minute, is given by a differentiable function VA of t, where time t is measured in minutes. Selected values for VA of t are given in the table above. Part A asks, find the average acceleration of train A over the interval 2 is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to 8. So if you remember acceleration, acceleration is the derivative of velocity, and we are given the velocity equation, and the derivative is also otherwise known as the slope. So if we take the average slope, of the velocity equation from uh, 2 to 8, we should get the answer to part A. So the regular slope formula is y sub 2 minus y sub 1 all over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. In this case, y sub 2 and y sub 1 is VA of t, which is negative 150, or I'm sorry, negative 120 and 100 because it's asking from 2 to 8. So if we do part A, actually, let's go down here. Part A, that, that's an A. <laughs> part A, we have negative 120 minus 100 all over x sub 2 minus x sub 1, which is 8 minus 2. Computing this, we get negative 220 all over 6 which is equal to negative 110 all over 3 and if you want to add in units of measure it doesn't really ask but it would be meters per minutes squared that is the answer to part A Part B asks us, do the data in the table support the conclusion that train A's velocity is negative 100 meters per minute at some time t with the interval 5 to 8? Give a reason for your answer. So first, we have to consider that whether or not this is a continuous function. Otherwise, anything could happen between 5 and 8. Now because in the description it tells us that VA of t is a differentiable function that also means it has to be continuous because a function cannot be differentiable if it is not continuous. So since it is continuous we have to look at the endpoints. So at the endpoint 5 we have the value of 40 at the endpoint 8 we have the value of negative 120. Now negative 100 does lie between 40 and negative 120 so the answer is yes, and the justification for this is the intermediate value theorem. So the answer would be yes, since VA of t is a differentiable function, VA of t is continuous. Since the interval 5, 8, starts at 40, I should say, since the interval at t 5 through 8 starts at 40 and ends at negative 120, VA of t must pass through the value negative 100 at some point. So that is the answer to part C. And now moving on to, I'm sorry, part B. And now moving on to part C. Oh, this is where we're going to have to start writing a lot. <laughs> At time t equals 2, train A's position is 300 meters east of the origin station, and the train is moving to the east. With an expression involving an integral that gives the position of train, oh, I'm sorry, write an expression that write an expression involving an integral that gives the position of train A 
in meters from the origin station at time t equals 12. Then it says, use a trapezoidal sum with three subintervals indicated by the table to approximate the position of the train at time t equals 12. So, looking at this, I automatically think of the fundamental theorem of calculus. So it's asking us to write an integral that gives the position of the train starting from t equals 2. So if we do the integral from 2 to 12 of VA of t dt, that is going to equal, now I'm going to call the antiderivative of VA of t, I'm going to call it P of t which stands for, which I'm going to make it stand for um, position. So somewhere in here I'm going to note that P of t is the antiderivative that's a lot of writing just so that whoever's grading my paper knows what P of t stands for. It's the antiderivative of VA of t. That's sloppy, but I'm just going to note it. So by the fundamental theorem of calculus, this says that it's equal to P of 12 minus P of 2. Now, in this question, it tells us that at time t equals 2, train A's position is 300 meters east. So since it's 300 meters east, this makes this a positive 300, well, minus a positive 300, because... Uh, if you think of position um, to the left of the axis would be negative and to the right of the axis would be positive. So rewriting this, we can rewrite P of 2 as minus 300. And it asks us to write an, an expression involving an integral that gives us the position of train A in meters from the origin station at time t equals 12. So if you add 300 to both sides, you get the integral expression that gives you the position at t equals 12. So from 2 to 12 of VA of t dt is equal to p of 12. That is the answer to the first part of question C. Now it asks, use a trapezoidal sum with three subintervals indicated by the table to approximate the position of the train at time t equals 12. So it says three subintervals, and obviously it tells us to start at 2. So we're going to use the intervals between 2 and 5, 5 and 8, and 8 and 12. So if you remember how to do the trapezoidal sum with a box of data, or a table of data, you do the average of the distance times the height added together, the bases added together. So that's basically what um, a trapezoidal area is. So from 2 to 5, that's a total of 3. The distance is 3. So you want to divide by 2 because it's the average. And it's from 100 to 40. So 100 plus 40. That's one interval, and we're going to add this to the next one, which is 5 to 8. The distance is also 3. The average of that would be dividing by 2, and the distance would be from 40 to 120, negative 120, so it would be 40 minus 120. And the final interval would be from 8 to 12, which is a distance of 4, not 3 and the average of that would be divided by 2 again and that is negative 120 to negative 150 so it would be negative 120 minus 150 now computing all this we get 140 divided by 2 is 70 times 3 is 210 so we get 210 I'm not going to write a plus because I know this is going to turn out to be an So 40 minus 120 is negative 80. Negative 80 divided by 2 is negative 40. And negative 40 times 3 is negative 120. So the second part becomes minus 120. For the third part, we get negative 120 minus negative 150, 
which is negative 270. Negative 270 divided by 2 times 4 is 540. So we get minus 540 for the last part. And adding all this up, subtracting whatever you want to call it, you end up getting a total of negative 150. And that is the position of the train at time t equals 12. So you can also write this as 150 meters west of the origin station, or negative 150 meters. Moving on to part D, it asks us, a second train, train B, travels north from the origin station. At time t, the velocity of train B is given by VB of t is equal to negative 5t squared plus 60t plus 25. And at time t equals 2, the train is 400 meters north of the station. Find the rate in meters per minute at which the distance between train A and train B is changing at time t equals 2. So this already tells me it's a related rates question and if you remember this is one of the uh, first related rates problems we started where it's basically a right triangle. So if we were to draw this out, if I can find the tool, <laughs> which is right over, where is the tool? Here it is draw a right triangle just to help visualize uh, you know what yeah draw a right triangle like this <laughs> train B is traveling north at a rate of 400 meters or I'm sorry the train is 400 meters north so if we look at two triangles uh, at north, we're going to look at two triangles, the distance triangle and the rate triangle. So the first triangle will be the distance triangle. So this is for train B. For train A at time t equals 2, oh this is for time t equals 2 by the way, both of them. Well actually the rate is a constant here so I don't have to write that. But at t equals 2, train B is 400 meters north of the origin, so we're going to keep as a, this as a positive 400. Train A, it tells us in part C that at time t equals 2, train A's position is 300 meters east. So this would be 300. And it's positive again. And because this is a 3-4-5 triangle, we know that the hypotenuse is 500. Now, looking at the rate triangle, uh, we know that the rate of A at time t equals 2 is 100 because it gives us the velocity function, and the velocity function is the speed, which is a rate, and well, here we have it. At time t equals 2, it's 100. Now, for train B, we don't have it, however, they gave us the velocity function right here. So all we have to do is simply plug in 2, and we'll have the rate at which, it, it's, um, at which it's going further north, or south, wherever you're going, wherever it's going. <laughs> so when we plug in 2, we get negative 5 times 2 squared, which is 4, plus 60 times 2 plus 25 is equal to 125. So we know that on the rate triangle this value is 125 and I'm going to call the missing side C <clears throat> to match with our triangle. So if we call this triangle A I'm sorry, side A, train A, train B, and train A and train B, let's put A, B. We have the equation, or the function, A squared 
plus b squared is equal to c squared. So now when we take the derivative, we get 2a dA dt plus 2b dB dt is equal to 2c dC dt. Now, since we have 2's everywhere, we can actually cancel that. <clears throat> and now, let's plug in uh, values for everything we have. So A is 300. DA dt is 100. Plus B, which is 400. Times DA, DB dt, which is 125 is equal to C, which is uh, 500, times what we're trying to find, which is DC dt. And I'm sorry for this uh, cut right here. I actually continued on this video because I made a mistake right here. Um, we can actually divide by 100 to get rid of these big numbers. And we're left at 3 times 100, which is 300, plus 4 times 125, which is 500, is equal to 5 dc dt. Adding these two numbers up, dividing by 5, we get a final value of 800 all over 5. And if I draw an up arrow here, because I can't scroll down, which is equal to dc dt, 800 divided by 5 is 160, and we get meters per minute for part d. And that is equal to dc dt. Thank you for watching, and that concludes this problem number 4.